NTV, you are still watching NTV Weekend Edition. Tonight on Talk of the Nation, we are talking the tax proposals and the Ministry of Finance has introduced a raft of new taxes proposed to raise monies to fund the national budget for the next financial year. Now, these proposals include a 2,500 shilling excise duty on each kilogram of flour for baking beer, 10% excise duty on bottled drinking water, that is the mineral water, then 100 shilling additional levy on each liter of fuel. But how will these proposals affect the common person or the small business owners? Now, to help us answer some of these questions, we do have John Walugembe, the Executive Director at the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises. Good evening, John, and thank you for joining us. Good evening, Mildred, and it's a pleasure having me here. Yes. Uh, I'm very sure you have taken a look at some of the new tax proposals yes, for sir. the next financial year. Yes, sir. Do we see any wins in some of these proposals? Okay. I mean, generally, business people can be excited about uh, these measures. I would say that there are some positives. Uh, for a long time, Uganda has been imposing income tax on uh, private equity funds. This is an alternative funding mechanism where an investor brings down money and invests directly into your business, mm -hmm. and they own a portion of it. Now, uh, government was taxing the proceeds from this, and the proposal is to exempt. I think that's a good thing. It means it unlocks a new form of financing for businesses. It allows more people to choose, more private equity investors to choose to come okay. and invest in Ghana and businesses. So I think that's a good proposal okay. and we applaud government for that. The second is that government has exempted local manufacturers of electric vehicles and charging stations. Unfortunately, it's only one company Pani, that yeah. I know of. Mm. So this seems to be a targeted uh, kind of measure. But nevertheless, it's a good thing from a climate change perspective. The only because this might attract more manufacturers to come and set up shop here. But I mean, I'm not sure about the practicality of it yet, but I think it indicates that government wants to go into the clean, uh, to take the direction of clean energy. Hmm. Now, the other measure is that government has uh, it proposed to VAT exemption hmm. on cooking stoves that use ethanol. I've not, pers I've not seen one, but they proposed that uh, there will be v VAT exemption on cooking stoves that use ethanol. Again, looking at clean energy uh, kind of angle and also they have continued to exempt uh, to propose VAT exemption for agricultural inputs including hoes and fertilizers and so on mm. so I think these are good things okay. particularly for farmers particularly for people that are very passionate about clean energy my concern of course is that some of these measures may be premature mm. because We've not developed to an extent where mm. businesses can take advantage of some of this. But nevertheless, there are good things. How, well, there is that good side, but there is also mm. this, however, side where there are concerns mm. that uh, the new tax proposals mm. will see uh, the co prices of commodities, you know, mm. go up, mm. uh, including fuel. What mm. do you make of this? No, I think government has, I think the measures, first of all, are many. I think considering the fact that this economy has been reeling from the COVID-19 pandemic and there have been disruptions, for instance, the withdrawal of financing by the World Bank and so on, they should have introduced fewer measures, but they seem to have introduced a raft of measures. And uh, this might um, not be a good thing. For instance, if you look at the excise duty on each bag of cement of 500 shillings and grout and white cement and so on, it means you're making it difficult for people to invest in construction. Mm. And at what does this mean for especially because uh, looking at some of these uh, tax proposals it's, yes. it's going to be affecting the end user in, in most also cases. The also the business. The hardware yes. stores. Yes. The hardware stores because yes. it means that you're going to get fewer clients because it means that bag of cement it's is going, going to go, go up. Mm. And then you're proposing you're bringing back this proposal of withholding tax on uh, non-business assets in cities and municipalities. It means you're waging a war against the real estate sector you know on one hand once i finished constructing mm. and on the other hand you're making it difficult for me to even construct mm. you know so i think you're making the price of land expensive you're making the price of the actual materials expensive mm. and then i have to pay you any capital gains and stuff so i think this is something we need to look at and say is it are we at a level where 
we should go in this direction mm -hmm. or we should allow the sector to grow. We are having a housing deficit, you mm -hmm. see. So why don't you create a tax regime that encourages people to invest and penalize them? Mm -hmm. So I, for me, I would, for instance, this 5% withholding tax issue, I'm strongly opposed. Uh, and what would have been the ideal? The ideal? Mm -hmm. Well, let the sector grow. You know, the issue with taxes is first allow the sector to grow and then you come in with gradual taxes. But now you're hitting it from different angles. You're hitting it from the rental tax angle. Mm -hmm. You're hitting it from the materials angle. And given you're the hitting fact it from the land angle. And given the fact that this is a very young sector in, in Uganda, exactly the real estate. And a lot of people, because you don't have a lot of investment um, options, it means a lot of people are using this sector to preserve their money and to grow it see? perhaps can now if you if you move aggressively against it it means you make it unviable mm. it means you are trying to make other destinations uh, competitors mm. so you'll find saving clubs building estates in nairobi mm. you know that, perhaps perhaps that if, since everyone is jumping onto the real estate perhaps uh, the government is doing it as seemingly booming yet on the other hand yeah, but allow it to boom you okay. know allow it to boom first mm. and then you can come in gradually with tax measures i think w on the and then you have the issue of, of carrots in this introduction i don't know why you know Kerosene is still being used. We don't like it, but that's the reality. You know, you can talk about LPG, you can talk all these <laughs> things, but this is, uh, you know, th this is wishful thinking. A lot of poor people still use uh, kerosene. Absolutely. It's not healthy, but we need to give it time. We can't just make their life more difficult by imposing mm. such a huge uh, excess duty okay. on a little of kerosene. Mm. The same with petrol and diesel. Mm. You know, these are these are th these are core to running an economy in terms of transportation. A lot of businesses, especially small-scale industries, use diesel-powered uh, generators and so on. So, if you increase the, the cost of a little sure. diesel or, or petrol, then you're making the cost of business to go high. Ex especially looking at the fact that we are just barely recovering from the you know effects of uh, the COVID-19 in, in, in regards to fuel. And just before that, again, another tax is, is being imposed on, on, on in that regard. But if, mm. if the government insists that this is a sacrifice from the taxpayer for the greater good to grow the economy further, yes. would you agree? No, we'd like the taxpayer to sacrifice, definitely. But our officials, government, what's your sacrifice? And we're asking you, please also sacrifice. You see, uh, some of these big cars, the guzzlers that you're driving, instead of having a convoy with 10 cars, have a convoy with two. Instead of giving yourself a package for I don't know what, you can, you can, you can, you can say, you know what, for, for because of the spirit of sacrifice, I want you know take that so we are saying this don't just ask the taxpayer the small business owner to sacrifice let's let all of us sacrifice we need it together mm. that's why we are saying let's cut back on expenditure mm. the rationalization what's happening to it you know because the, you know it went to parliament and then someone comes up with a weak excuse and they say oh we hold everything so how wha, how do we ensure that we cut back on unnecessary expenditure, expenditure uh, in the spirit of sacrifice so that's what we are saying let everyone sacrifice a difficult time mm -hmm. instead of increasing the budget by uh, to 58 uh, trillion mm -hmm. maybe we could have increased it maybe to 53 from mm -hmm. 52 that mm -hmm. would be fair instead of saying you are is going to collect 31 trillion we can say okay last year we gave them a target of 29 okay maybe let them collect 29.5 you know something like that that's moderate and that makes us feel that not uh, there's we don't have excessive pressure being applied on businesses and taxpayers at such a difficult time. Mm. Yeah. Yes, but uh, I in their defense, it's they're yeah. looking to raise money to, fa to fund the national budget of the coming year. Yeah. But now, if, if the government insisted that the only way mm -hmm. uh, you know, to grow the economy yes. is by two alternatives, okay. which is to borrow money or yeah. to increase and widen the tax base. No, th those are not the only two alternatives. The other alternative is to cut on expenditure. And then the other alternative is to also direct resources in productive sectors. But in this so regard, which one, is more which one is more acceptable? No, the first thing, you see, if you want to grow rich, you can't just say, I'll look for more money. You can say, how can I save the little I have as a starting point, isn't it? Mm. And you are saying, instead of saying that I've lost a job, should I go to the bank to borrow? 
or should the first thing is first cut down on your expenditure to start with. First leave that house of two million and go into a house of two hundred thousand. That's what we are telling God. It's a difficult time. Mm -hmm. So let's first cut down on expenditure before we borrow, before we try to collect more domestic revenue, which is a good thing and which we fully support. Mm -hmm. We are saying cut down on expenditure so that the uh, that small resource envelope that we have is better directed. That's mm -hmm. the, that, that's that's our judgment. Mm -hmm. We are saying because now what you see most of most of these are indirect tax measures, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it means that same taxpayers that have been paying tax are the same people going to bear this burden. So you're not necessarily expanding the tax base. Rather. You instead you're digging deeper, isn't okay. it? Mm -hmm. so, so that that's why we we are saying it's fine, but. Cutting down on public expenditure for us is extremely critical. Number two is spending wisely, making sure that the resources that we collect are used to boost the economy. I invested in productive sectors. Mm -hmm. I helped to improve the cost of doing business. I helped to boost productivity in the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. I helped to ensure that the cost of electricity comes down. We have better infrastructure. We have things that can help our businesses to prosper. So you, have, uh, you clearly did mention some of the effect, the impact of yeah. the, you know, the new proposed taxes. But are there any other side effects uh, of these new proposed taxes, especially to the business owners? No, for the business owners, it's a bigger burden, you see? It's a bigger burden. And we are not saying, we are not opposed, and this we must make clear. Mm. And we are not opposed to the taxes. Mm. We are not saying that businesses shouldn't pay tax. We are simply saying businesses should pay proportional taxes. Okay, so if you're... Not excessive mm. taxes. Okay. And once they are collected, we want to go back to the aspect of a social contract. How do we deploy these funds to ensure that they can help these businesses to grow and create more jobs? Okay, so uh, if you're a business owner and these proposals were to be approved by Parliament, what yes. advice would you give to the small businesses as we get to conclude what this I would conversation? What I tell the business owner is please comply because government is looking for money. I saw some people shouting, oh, if freeze and so on. Mm -hmm. No one is going to remove it. I'm sorry, I'm not a spokesman for you, RIA, but we have to tell our business owners. You can't fight against if we it's simply a system. Just comply, just learn, you know? So every business owner there, out there, we can come here and tell government, change here, change there, but once the laws are passed, mm -hmm. once the tax acts are passed and everything, you just have to comply. So I want to tell you, please put your house in order. Okay. We can fight for you before. Once the taxes are passed, just make sure you follow. And finally, to the Ministry of, if, if you had the chance to advise the Ministry of, of To the Finance. Ministry of Finance, our request is, please make the tax, let's make sure that we cut down on ex our expenditure. Mm. Number two, we direct our resources into those sectors that we think can boost this economy. And number three, let's keep talking with business people. Mm. Don't just sit in the air-conditioned offices and say, I think OPEC beer deserves 150 shillings mm. more as excise duty and so on. Let's have discussions so that we come up with measures that do not kill local businesses or right. sectors. All right. Thank you, John Walugembe, for sharing those insights. Uh, he is the executive director at the Federation of Small and Medium Size Enterprises and getting to help us understand the impact of the newly proposed taxes. Well, that conversation takes us in for a short break, but interview weekend edition continues shortly.